Description I wear cap. <laughs> 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 Description I wear cap. <laughs> 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 Show, starring Lucille Ball, co-starring Vivian Vance. and I are going into New York. What are you two going to do? March in the old Betts parade? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's in our honor. There aren't many of us left who served with Admiral Dewey at Manila. <laughs> oh, what are you really going to do? Well, Jane Corey, our old commanding officer, has invited us to lunch. She's traveling around the country now trying to interest women in the space program. Hey, I'm impressed, Mom. You know somebody who works for NASA. What's up? <laughs> NASA. You know, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Oh, that NASA. <laughs> oh, hi, Emily. to you. Nothing happened to me. This is what I get for sending my clothes to a cheap cleaner. <laughs> hey, how come your uniform looks so good? Oh, I don't know. I guess it's just a matter of keeping yourself in shape. You know, like we used to do in the Navy. Aha, uh -huh, you had your jacket let out, didn't you? <laughs> well, did you or didn't you? Only my dressmaker knows for sure. <laughs> I just can't go like this. Oh, come here, Viv. Come here now. I'm sure I can button your jacket. Well, come on now. Pull your stomach in. <laughs> I said pull in your stomach. It is in. <laughs> You're kidding. For me, it's in. <laughs> oh, it's no use. Just forget the whole thing and you go by yourself. Oh, now, Viv, please. I'm not going to let Jane Corey see me bursting out of this uniform. Oh, Viv, wait a minute. You can take my waist cincher, the one that I bought so I could squeeze into my black sheath. That thing, it's too uncomfortable. Oh, please, Viv. Well, all right. I'll go up and lace myself into that straight jacket. Okay. <laughs> but I'd a lot rather stay home and wallow around in my moo moo. <laughs> to attend today because I feel that women of your caliber will provide the nucleus for our future Women in Space program. According Lucy, to I think I'm going to have to go out in the hall and take a walk. I can't breathe in this thing. I told you not to eat my dessert. I think I'm going to faint. You can't you faint, you're in uniform. <laughs> Stick around and watch. Now, I have some big news. On Monday, as part of our Women in Space program, we are going to conduct a psychological test. We're going to put two women into a simulated space capsule for a period of 24 hours. 
for a compatibility test. My, isn't that exciting? Lucy, I think I really am going to faint. What'll I do? Bend over, put your head between your knees. If I could bend over, I wouldn't have to bend over. <laughs> To help us conduct this experiment, I'm going to ask for two of you to volunteer. I know how I can help you get your breath. <laughs> well, I am proud to say that we have our volunteers. They got somebody. <laughs> Lucy Carmichael and Vivian Bagley. anymore. Pull the switch, the door will open. Any questions? Uh, negative. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. It's our honor. Oh, yes, I'm sure it'll be a thrill of a lifetime. <laughs> okay, girls, here we go. I'll see you in 24 hours. Oh, yes, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, it's small, but it's cozy. Oh, yes, it's cozy, if you don't mind spending 24 hours in a footlocker. <laughs> well, now, let's not start out by being grouchy. I've got a right to be grouchy. Why didn't you let me tell Jane that we didn't really volunteer? And let her think that we're cowards? I am a coward. <laughs> well, I'm not, and I don't want her to think that my best friend is a coward. Anyway, it's too late. We've already blasted off the launching pad. Now, dramatizing it isn't going to make it one bit better. Do you realize Eddie had invited me to a big party tonight and a lot of Broadway celebrities were going to be there? Oh. Communication center calling. Do you read me? Over. Uh. Hi, Jane. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, we read you. Over. We read you just fine. Everything all right? Over. Everything A-OK, -okay. uh, lift off normal, over. From time to time during your flight, we'll be in communication with you, and you can reach us through your intercom at any time, over. Will do. Uh, condition here is go, go, over and out. <laughs> I think your mind is gone, gone. Lucy? What? Kind of small, isn't it? Negative. <laughs> it's all the room we need. After all, we're not going to be giving a dance. But there aren't any windows. You know me and my claustrophobia. I get panicky if I have to make a call from a telephone booth. <laughs> oh, that's just silly. It's all in your head. You bet your sweet life it is. <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to pull that chicken switch. Oh, no, you're not oh, there. Yes, I oh, am. no, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. I'm going to see this thing through. I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm yes, not, you are. I'm not going to do it. Now, look, calm down. Take it easy, Viv. Take it easy. Calm down. And I'll give you something to eat. What? I said I'll give you something to eat. Food? Yes. <laughs> now, sit down. Just sit right down there, and I'll serve you dinner. Oh. Fine. <laughs> Let's see now, what's on the menu for dinner? Roast turkey and baked potato. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> what's this? 
That's your roast turkey and baked potato. <laughs> what do we eat it with, a fork or a toothbrush? <laughs> you eat it like this, I saw it on television. <laughs> How's your turkey? <laughs> Not bad at all, mine tastes like all white meat. <laughs> How's yours? <coughs> Wouldn't you know I got the gizzard. <laughs> snack. <laughs> what does it taste like? Fried licorice whips. cured me of my fear of telephone booth. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Well, you should be sorry. I'm sorry, Bill. I didn't Ugh. mean it. I really, I, I didn't mean it. Where are you going I'm going to pull that chicken switch. No, you're not going to pull oh. that chicken switch. Don't oh. you want this experiment to be a success? Don't you care what people think about you? Double negative. Good, now you stop. We have got to stay in here to prove that women can be compatible. But we're not compatible. Oh, yes, we are compatible. <laughs> and don't you give me any of your back talk. We're about this compatible. I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. How is everything? Let me talk to her. Oh, no, you don't. Thank you. But where are you, Aunt Viv? <laughs> right behind your mother's arm. <laughs> well, now, how did that happen? <laughs> Remember, you were saluting the Earth people on your return from outer space. <laughs> Don't feel bad, Mom. I knew it was you. I recognize your ear. Thanks, darling. I'll go tell Cynthia to save her paper for us. Oh, that's a good idea. You two go and get as many copies as you can. Okay. Hurry up now. Hello? Yes? Oh, really? Oh, Viv, somebody from one of the papers in New York. They saw our story in the Danville Tribune, and they want a feature story on us. Yes? Yes, this is Ensign Carmichael. No, I'm the one saluting. <laughs> well, no. No, it wasn't too bad, although my helper, Bagley, experienced some claustrophobia and panicked at one point. Yes, but I took command and concluded the experiment. <laughs> well, thank you. But I was more than glad to do my part to further man's conquest of outer space. No. No, they haven't said anything about my going into a real orbital flight. Well... If and when they do, it's A-OK -okay with me. <laughs> Over and out. Well, thanks a lot. What's the matter, dear? 
Because of you, I'm soon to be known all over the world as Chicken Switch Bagley. <laughs> now, I was just trying to give the story a human interest angle. Well, this is one human it doesn't interest. <laughs> and what's with all that orbital jazz? What makes you think they'd be crazy enough to send you into outer space? Well, now they might. And I just wanted them to know that I was available. Remember what our president said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Congratulations. Took every flower in my garden. Thanks, Harry. I'll give it to Lucy. And I only hope she can squeeze it on over her swelled head. What's with you? Oh, I'm sorry, Harry. I'm just fed up with Colonel Glenn Carmichael. Oh, she's taking it pretty big, huh? Well, you know Lucy. That big? Yeah. And you haven't even heard the worst. Huh? She hitting that she may be the first woman into outer space. Oh, boy, that's too much. Yeah, you're darn right it's too much, and I'm going to do something about it. Why? Well, I'm working on a plan. Yeah? What is it? She says she'd be happy to be the first lady into outer space. I'm going to make her the happiest woman in the world. What are you going to do? She's going to be the first lady astronaut. Or at least she'll think she is. Ooh, how are you going to work it? With a borrowed space suit and you. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> you just go to your little house next door and make a phone call from Cape Canaveral. <laughs> So long, but I had to sign autographs for the kids at the market. Lucy, what? This box came for you. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's from NASA. I wonder what it is. Yeah, I wonder what it is. Hello? Yes, Anson Carmichael is here. Just a minute. It's long distance from Florida. Florida? Yes. Hello? Yes, this is Ensign Carmichael. <laughs> yes, sir. Me, sir? <laughs> Off in the wild blue what, sir? <laughs> oh, good grief, sir. Oh, no, sir. Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. What's up? Me at Cape Canaveral. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That was the head of NASA ordering me to report I've been selected to train as a lady astronaut. Oh, that's wonderful, Lucy. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. It's just what you wanted. Yeah. Yeah, it's just what I wanted. I wonder what is in this box. <laughs> Face suit? Yes, isn't that darling? <laughs> yeah, darling. <laughs> Oh, great. She's upstairs now putting on her space suit. She just scared stiff. <laughs> Lucy, Harry's down here. Don't you want to come down and say goodbye? Oh, you must have been great on the telephone. She really fell for it. Oh, I almost broke up. Yes, sir. No, sir. Oh, good grief, sir. Off in the wild blue what, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Dummy. Dum Lucy! 
Yeah. Viv just told me the news. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Say, when do you blast off? Well, they didn't say, but any time at all is all right with me. <laughs> Lucy, you're certainly being brave about this. I'd be scared stiff. Yeah, well... There's nothing to be scared of, Viv. She's got the greatest minds in the country behind her. Besides, what's the worst thing that could happen? What? What? <laughs> you might overshoot your target on the splashdown. Splashdown? Yeah, you know, when you land in the water. But I can't swim. <laughs> Carmichael, remember, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. <laughs> but I collect for the Red Cross. I buy savings bonds. I was with the wave. How much does that man in the White House want from me? <laughs> Astronauts don't cry. No, I guess not. Besides, I might short circuit my control. <laughs> Darling. What? I don't want you to worry about Chris and Jerry. I'll take care of them in case. <laughs> well, in case anything happens. What do you mean, in case anything happens? Isn't this just routine? Lift off, zip around a couple of times and splash down? Well, usually, yes. But you know, in space, what goes up doesn't necessarily have to come down. <laughs> you mean... the rest of my life? I wouldn't worry. It's an outside chance. I'll get it. Maybe Cape Canaveral's fogged in. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. This is Jane Corey. Oh, hi. I thought I'd stop by and pick up that spacesuit, if you're through with it. Oh? Frankly, I couldn't see the point of it, but then you and Viv are always playing jokes on each other in the Navy. Tell me, did the gag work? <laughs> yes. Yes, uh-huh. Fine, I'll see you later then. Bye. Okay, goodbye. That was Chris. I'm so glad that I could hear her voice once more before I go. Yes, that's nice. But I guess I might as well face it. Something might happen. So if I do, just... <laughs> would you do me a favor? Every year on my birthday, would you ask the people of Danfield to turn on their light? <laughs> yes, sure. We promise. And Harry, if by chance on one of your flights you happen to see me up there so I won't be lonely, will you waggle your wings? Yeah, sure, I'll waggle. <laughs> and Viv, I appreciate your offer to look after Chris and Jerry. And I'm going to take you up on it. You're the dearest, most wonderful woman in the world. And you're practically their second mother anyway. And Harry, Harry, you're my dearest friend. So I want you two to raise my children. Lucy, don't go! <laughs> What's the matter with you, Viv? She's not going. That's right, I forgot. Lucy, I've got something to tell you. This is all just a big joke. I got something to tell you, too. That was Jane Corey on the phone, and I know it. <laughs> that was a dirty trick. One dirty trick deserves another. But you had it coming to you, walking around here so big-headed. And you were just as mean as she was, Harry. Well, us old-fashioned jet pilots are just nasty. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy. You should have seen the look on your face when you thought you were really going into orbit. You were scared green. <laughs> now, just wait a minute. Apprehensive, maybe. Excited, but not scared. As a matter of fact, I was just a teensy-weensy bit disappointed that it was a joke. Now, imagine what a thrill it would be to be the first lady astronaut. 
And there I'd be, zooming into space. Just me and the stars and the universe. That sounds plenty A-OK -okay to me. Making history, advancing science, doing... <laughs>